is Sunday, July 19th, 2020. I am Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Any Turn Like the episode number 561. And I haven't done this for two weeks. Three weeks. I like this. So I get a little screwed up in some places and not forget to share the sound with uh, my, my lovely co-host here, including our guest, guest, Edward Angelini Cook. <gasps> Yay! Welcome back. Thank you. One of our, so one of our favorite guests. Note I said one of the favorites, so he's not just the only favorite. We have a lot of favorites. Well, thank God. That's a lot thank of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure every guest was a favorite. In several different ways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not going there. <laughs> so we we have our guest here uh for a specific reason Let's talk about sex. i i would like to ask you what the topic is uh regarding gary regarding me I'm, I'm, I'm Boy, asking you, are you really what this, rusty. What this? I'm asking you. <laughs> yes, but your phrasing sounded like it was impromptu. It was, was, was bad. I, I admit it. It was a terrible, I, terrible. I segue. think he was he was trying to segue and use the topic as a segue, and it could have worked, but it didn't. We get a womp womp from the okay. partner in the background. And, uh, also breaking David for doing it. All right. So, Ed, the last time you were on, we had you for a series of shows, and we talked about relationships. Mm -hmm. And usually with relationships, uh, caveat, romantic relationships, I guess I should say, uh there tends to be intimacy and in the human species we tend to call that sex yes so <laughs> we thought we'd have you back again only this time the focus is on asking and receiving which sounds mm. a lot like pitchers and catchers if you ask me Sounds like what? Pitchers and catchers. Did you say pitchers Pitcher. and catchers? Oh, okay. Pitching. Pitchers and catchers. I didn't get the first word. Girl, come on. Catch up. Catch up. I mean, I think it was <laughs> I'm, a sports analogy and you're a theater queen and everything, but come on. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. I <sighs> can't take you anywhere, dude. What they give. The shade one of it that all. takes. Yeah. Well, one that penetrates. That one that, you know, accepts. Sending and receiving. Yeah. So, um, yeah, because uh, I think it's important that people understand this aspect of communication um, to have healthy relationships with other people, whether they are your, you know, betrothed, the person that you've committed yourself to, um, you know, through bonds of matrimony or some other aspect or even if you're just good friends or mm -hmm. in the midst of developing such a thing um and i think some of this could possibly uh, lay over like overlay a little bit into regular life you just have to kind of navigate that correctly mm -hmm. so tell us professor <laughs> what are some things that we should know about asking and receiving well, uh, Gary, like you said, um, you know, well, like, so in the past times that I've been here, I've said that, 
you know, like a lot of the skills that we learn can be used in very many contexts, right? In relationships, because relationships are more than just romantic. Sometimes they have a level of intimacy. Um, sometimes they're not very that intimate, right? Like sometimes we're asking something from a stranger, right? Or mm -hmm. like a very, uh, like our boss um, or somebody that we don't really have that deep of an intimate connection. So, I mean, I think that a lot of the things that we are going to be talking about are very applicable across the spectrum of intimacy. Um, but, uh, you know, like, so I can see from both of your t-shirts, I think that consent is is going to play a really big part of this um, because consent is like the playing field that we, uh, well, we'll get into it, but um, okay. it's kind of the, um, I'm going to be using a, a metaphor of pizza later. Um, I like so it's kind of like the pizza pie that we can, uh, we can play with. Um, okay. So, uh, and I talked about feet play, right? Because Gary's been out. <laughs> <laughs> Never going to live that episode down, am I? You fuckers. No. <laughs> uh, so, um, so let me ask a question. So why do you think it's so hard to ask for something uh, during sex or even just in general? Um, why do you think it's hard? <laughs> Gary? <laughs> Wow, uh, that was a quick hand raise and a ooh, 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 well, me. <laughs> <laughs> the way he asked the question, I was like, like I just, you know, what, and specifically during sex more than I think that other things, but it could be all the time. Um, I think there's vulnerability. Yeah, and asking for something is opening yourself up to be shut down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Most people don't like to be told no. They don't like mm -hmm. to be refused. They don't like um, to not get what they desire or what they want. So it's risky psychologically, I think, for most of us to ask for something when the possibility exists that you will not get it. Um, mm -hmm. and it. And it backfires on us because I think a lot of us, myself primarily, like we get um, in incredibly independent and self-reliant. And so we don't really consider asking other people for the things that we yeah. need or desiring because and society is progressing more and more and more in this direction it's becoming very problematic um i'm gonna take a wild stab at that you would agree with this people are failing at understanding that they can ask for things because why would they bother to ask they can just get it like they can get it themselves mm -hmm. we live in a in a, such a society now it's kind of like why should I bother to ask for something when I can just order it and it'll be here in a couple of days or a couple of hours? Um, mm -hmm. You know, and the, and the world is our oyster. It's it's an endless buffet, so to speak. Yeah. For your various desires, needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you yeah, were so kind like, of kidding. Yeah, so like there's that fear of rejection, um, that fear that you're not going to love me if you find out that like I have this request of you that I'm building up in my head um, as like something that like I feel like I'm not even I may not even be deserving of to me mm -hmm. right but could be like a very reasonable request um, but uh, but but I've built it up and that anxiety that that tension um, prevents me from asking for something really basic right yeah um, mm -hmm. And, you know, and we can see how, like, uh, we're not really taught how to do this in school, um, which um, I'll get into. But, uh, you know, like, if we're not taught this growing up, like, obviously, they're not teaching this in sex education. Obviously, we're, we're not really taught that in our, like, family structure. So we bring that into the relationships that we have. Um, and then we'll, we don't get what we want. And then we have relation um, relationship dissatisfaction. And then we break up, and then that cycle keeps perpetuating, perpetuating, perpetuating. And you just have broken people not asking for what they want, and mm -hmm. um, and it sucks. And I'm 
hi. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm definitely a, a guilty party in this. Um, and this, you know, it is scary. Yeah. Well, I will say this, because um, I feel compelled to, uh-huh. out of a sense of concern, uh, for everyone out there, like, like, thinks about the fact that you know that they that they have this about them that they've lived this, this cycle. Here's the upside, um, and I think I don't know for certain, so I don't want to step out of out of my box, but. I'm pretty sure that step programs, one of the very first things is recognizing the pattern or uh, that you have said situation or like, as some people might say, like, this is, this is your addiction. This is your issue, whatever it may be. So I think there's something to be said for being able to look at yourself and be like, Oh, this is a thing about me. Like that. I have this quality, whatever it is that I, you know, live in fear, act out of fear, whatever it may be, because I, you know, don't feel that I am worthy or whatever it, you know, it may end up being. And therefore, you know, it just kind of plays its whole self out. Yeah. We, uh, I would consider that like a uh, manageability, um, and also powerlessness, um, and surrender like that, uh, you know, like by me, by me not asking for my needs to get met, um, it creates this chaos in my life. Um, and I'm the only one who can, you know, um, other people may recognize it. And typically I'm the last person to know about it. <laughs> um, but you're right that it does take me and uh, my admission of like, hey, this is really getting in the way of my intimacy with myself and with other people. And that um, uh, and a lot of it is I have no control over whether you say no or not. Mm-hmm. I have no control over if you say yes or not. But, like, I do have control over asking for my needs to get met. Um, and the first step is fucking asking. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, I think actually maybe the first step might be getting the... I want to use the word courage, but I don't think that's the exact word I want to use. But, like, getting the the, like, out of your head and actually going ahead and asking. You know, um... I don't know what that would entail, but there's a big part of me that feels like taking that step and understanding that you have to potentially not get the answer you want. And be Mm -hmm. aware that you may not get the answer you want and but still being able to answer the question or ask the question, I should say, even though you might not get what you want. That sounds like the serenity prayer. Well, I mean, I, <laughs> well, <Christian. laughs> I mean, I, I think one of the key things is that um, the process gets easier when you are comfortable with rejection. Mm-hmm. Like when you are accepting of the possibility of hearing no and moving beyond that quicker oh, and that, than before. And that like no says nothing about you and everything to do with the other person, right? Like... And exactly. their comfortability level, right? It's, exactly. It's, um, uh, you know, like, uh, I don't remember, how, what was that, like two years ago when Gabe did our uh, presentation at Drench Fair? Yeah. Three, no, three years ago now, um, two and a half, whatever. Um, but we <laughs> gave a, a talk, and I asked Gabe to be here, but he couldn't be here, unfortunately. But, um, but we we gave a workshop on um, like getting, getting more of what you want by asking for what you want. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, one of the main talking points was that like, we are so afraid to hear the word no, but like, you know, we, cause we internalize that. And, you know, the thing that we said was it's, it has nothing to do with you and everything about the other person and their Mm -hmm. comfort levels. Um, And I feel like that's a really good message to send out. Um, because, you know, like, you know, sales techniques, right? Like, there are so many no's until you get a yes. Yeah. So what may not be for one person could be for another per- another another one. Right. And I think what's difficult for folks to know is that you can survive it. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. the, that the rejection is not a permanency. It doesn't brand you with a scarlet A. Do you know what I mean? Like you're not um, stuck with this for life. It just is 
challenging to move through whatever this moment is to the you know the next moment um yeah and and i hate to say it but honestly i think the only way you learn that is by actually outright experiencing it because i feel more often than not all of us can talk about this ad nauseum forever whatever Mm -hmm. and give a gazillion examples but until a person actually has that and can recall it the reason why i say and recall it is because you can experience it but i think you can forget that that happened especially mm-hmm. if it if it was something minor in comparison to the current now and you're you're not seeing it as equivalent you might be like oh i remember this one time i asked for ice cream and i got told no and you're not equating that with like i'm asking for someone to like tie me up and you know like t- you're like well, those two are totally different things well they are but that doesn't negate the fact that like you had an experience in which you were told no and that you were okay exactly mm-hmm. yeah because like these are messages that we've been hearing from early early childhood right like and it really depends on where we came from like don't ask don't ask for something that um uh like don't be selfish mm-hmm. like you know that's yeah. something that like is very ingrained in us and it can yeah. It can really feel selfish to say, hey, can you do this for me? Can you do this to me? Can you do this to me? Um, Could you not do that? Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, and we'll get it. Um, You know what what is coming up to me, and I I love that we're talking about this. Um, Alanis Morissette, you know the song, uh, That I Would Be Good? Mm Mm-mm. I don't think you I don't know that, that song. song, Gary. Do you know that song? That I would be good yeah. either with or without you. Mm. Not a fan. Like, I think it uh, was one of her more popular songs. It wasn't on Jagged Little Pill, was it? No. No, I think it was on former, uh, former, oh. supposed former infatuation junkie. It was definitely on Unplugged, though. Either way, the message of the song is that, like, all of these negative things could happen to me, but I'm still going to be okay. Mm-hmm. And um, and I think that kind of is, like, wrapping up our point that, like, you know, you could get – somebody could say no to you, and you're still going to be okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, segue into that um, – well, do you think that uh, you're being rude if you don't show appreciation for the other person um, that you're having sex with? Do I think I'm rude I'm not showing appreciation for the other participant? Like do if do I think I'm being rude? Like, if you're getting a blowjob from somebody, um, uh-huh. do you think it's rude to not show appreciation for that other participant in giving you a blowjob? Well, what's the yeah. dynamic? Um, <laughs> just say it's a mutual. Said, hey, maybe it was I supposed to be job. a blow, blow and go. Because I mean, like, I, that's really complicated. I think. Well, what were the expectations during it? Yeah, like cause I'm if thinking the person, of a simple. I if suppose the, if, it's either reciprocating and or saying thank you or somehow giving some sort of appreciation for well, other so sort like, of I think, positive enforcement saying you did a good job sort of thing. Yeah, like, I mean, if you are, um, you know, there's so there's another side of this coin here. We can ask for what we want, but what do we do when we get what we want? And yeah. I think with receiving, receiving the thing that we ask for, it is, um, it should be, um, and I mean... I'm putting it out there that like part of this is, hey, thank you, thank you for giving me that thing that I asked for. Yeah. Um, I really appreciate it. Yeah, I, I mean, right. it really, uh, as you said, I, I really think it depends on on the actual specific situation. Uh, I mean, my experiential one is I've never had these specific expectations for necessarily saying uh, thank you or anything, but I always thank them anyways. And when she. Uh, way, shape, or form. So, but there are sometimes there might be there might be a another circumstance where somebody's looking for 
a blowjob because they want to get blowjobs, but they don't care about being appreciated for it. Kind of a more something I've never run across in that sort of thing. But uh, I mean, wow. not just I have ejaculating in their mouth as, as a thank you. I usually have some for, sort of other form, which usually involves the word thank you or thanks. Here's your cookie. Here's a cookie. Uh, <laughs> so, well, this is where, like, I, I really kind of, I, call back. I'm really, I'm really kind of stuck because I'm thinking about, like, like sex could be transactional. Sex could be mm -hmm. intimate. Sex yeah. can mm -hmm. also be considered love, like making love. Right. And to me, those are three separate things, and they have very different expectations and, like, outcomes, and therefore the responses, like, of appreciation, I think, could be different. And here's where yeah. my example is going. If, if a cocksucker goes and blows a guy who just wants to get it off, like, just have a nut, if the cocksucker is expecting to be thanked, I kind of feel like, mm, really, girl? Like, seriously? Like, is that, well, dude? Like, is that is that is that a, a realistic expectation? Like, if the other mm -hmm. person's a nice person, yeah, they might say it. But if they're kind of self-absorbed and they're on a timetable and they got something to do and like they got to go a place, you know what I mean? Like, I think. Like, that's why, like, like the there's restroom, so many... bathroom, like, cook up. Right. Like, there's so much, like, circumstances and stuff that I think, like, and, and the cocksucker I... may be perfectly content with the fact that they ejaculate as the thank you. Like, that was the goal. Like, that is what they wanted. So, therefore, they got what they, you know, were seeking. Right. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm, oh, gosh. Gary, I hate you sometimes because you make things so overly complicated. <laughs> like, because I was like, my, my immediate first response to this question was like, of course, yes, obviously. But then you're like, oh, well, what about like dynamics? And then what about this? And I'm like, I mean, yeah, that does it's, it's change kind the of, of like, what, what, change What's the, the definition? <laughs> what's the definition of appreciation in this spe specific encounter? Is kind of the well, thing. because you didn't say thank you. You said show appreciation right can and be so a little bit I, different. I think here's here's the essence of what it comes down to what was negotiated what was communicated beforehand like Ding was dong. there was there a preface of any sort like was anything said you know about what this is for those of you that are not watching us david is like <laughs> freaking out about like how on the nose what i said was like yeah like i mean i mean and i think that's that's a key piece of it like we we are very deficient as a species in communication skills mm -hmm. period yes. like we well, think so, we like, know how to communicate but not not necessarily yeah uh yes gary everything that you said um so like i the other part of like the appreciation or like the like the art of receiving is that like sometimes we ask for something but we haven't really said exactly what we wanted um so like what do you do if you ask somebody for a blowjob but they're not doing that thing that you really like uh when you are getting a blowjob you know like that thing um what do you do Again, depending on the depending on the circumstances, <laughs> there might be things you could do, like for me, like though, balls or they well, not, well, like not for tickling me, your taint, okay, okay. Not, okay. Not so like tickling your asshole, you know, like yeah, all that. Anyway, so like for me, like depending on the situation. So say I'm in a scene, and this is I'm going into kind of like the kinky leather kind of thing situation kind of thing. If part of our negotiated dynamic is if you're not doing what I want, I get to like hit you on the side of the face or tap you on the, you know, shock you with a little, you know, prod or whatever. Whatever has been negotiated. Consent, consent, fuckers. Consent. Uh, yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, then then that's kind of what happens. Um, I I am, I also, as if I'm just getting like a regular bow job, like normal, like, there's a, there's a part of me that will hopefully state you know verbally give some kind of indication like 
can you, would you mind doing that thing? You know, could you not use your teeth? Um, or maybe use your teeth a little bit. Or, you know, or... Or bite revolve, down right? on my head, please. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If, if, if I'm not necessarily getting what I want and you are the one that is providing the service, gosh, it sounds bad. So, uh, then you can, then I can tell you what exactly I need. Or if you're not providing <laughs> great customer service yeah. or excellent customer <laughs> service, as well, um, throw it back to a, to a certain daddy and a video from years ago. Bear Voyage, Daddy Hadrian. I'm providing excellent customer service as he walks away. Anyway, uh, Bear Voyage too, I think actually. But yeah, yes. so like that's what I mean. Very like specific. that's what I mean. Like yeah, like it's the whole like. There you go. Like you, I, you need to tell someone to do the things that they need to do if they don't know you. Like if you, if like if you've been in a relationship for a long part time, like usually the person that you're with probably knows your ins and outs at least in the present they may not know everything all at once but they might be able to know like the things that you enjoy they might know that spot that gets you all happy and wound up and getting the good feelings <laughs> love you sweetie um, uh-huh um are if are not and if you're like if this is just like a random hook up then you know you might get lucky and they might hit on that spot and then you can kind of guide them in the direction as it were so oh. basically you want them to or want to tell them what you want what you really really want yep. yeah. yes if you really you need to assess the situation and then choose a path from there and if you're not getting what you want and you don't think it's going to be possible or it, you know, then you may just have to change the circumstances. Mm -hmm. Like really, really just end it joke, but... and leave. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. So kind of what I'm hearing that consent is going to be a prerequisite um, and also co-requisite of these uh, scenarios. Um and, you know, I think, like, we, we kind of talked about that consent is as much about saying no as it is about saying yes, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I do agree to that. Um, and, you know, as we already know, that, like, one of the important things about consent is it doesn't just, it's not just established at the beginning and it can't be changed. It can, go, it can change throughout. Um, and, like, and I think that... Um, as far as consent goes, like, changing midway, like, sure, like, you know, we hear that, like, hey, if something's going, um, swords are red, that, like, hey, I don't really like this. If something's going really well and you want to change your mind about something, you're fr free to go, like, hey, I know that we said I didn't want to do this, but, like, I'm I'm feeling okay right now. Like, how about we do yeah. this? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh... Yeah. Yeah. I've been in many a scenario where, at, like, I'll just use because I've been because I do it, I teach it too. Flogging is a big one where mm -hmm. the new person who has never had it done before is a perfect example of someone who may not necessarily know what they like and don't like. So you start off slow, you get things going, and you build as you go, taking moments to, um, check in and see how they're going, how they're feeling. You know, I've had many a time where the person I've checked in with, they're like, I'm really liking what you're doing right now. Can you keep it there for a while? And then if I need to, I'll let you build up again. And I'm like, oh, sure. So it's just a way to kind of negotiate the path. I've also had the guy that was like, like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm hitting you like with my flogger. And like, are you really? And I'm like, okay, so do you want me to go harder? And he's like, yeah. So, aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> like, ta-da. Like, exactly. Which is, which is always fun. Yeah. Um, so have y'all ever seen the consent um, video that, like, talks about consent in the terms of serving somebody tea? 
Mm, I totally no. have. I yeah. have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Gary? No, not that I... I Well, maybe, but I don't recall. Well, Same I... Way. Well, I put it in. I put. Oh, Jeff, you haven't seen it either. Uh, I, I, I may have. I don't remember. Well, um, I put the link in the show notes. Um, I think it's, it. You know, like when we talk about it in school, it's definitely the go-to video. Um, mm -hmm. It's comical. It's topical, and I think it it gets the point across as far as T goes, um, or as mm -hmm. consent goes. <laughs> yeah. so, so basically it's spilling the tea about about consent yeah yes it's a really good video i actually um have seen it um several times because it it does give like the whole story and it's essentially the nose i mean it's the the idea behind it is like yes you can say i want to have tea now and then later on you can say no and it's not it should not be a problem it should not be an issue it's you may have wanted it then but you don't want it now and you shouldn't get i don't want to use the word punished but that's the word that comes to mind because you don't want it now even though you said you wanted it before yeah i actually really like the video yeah um it's good and i i think the um you know, you wouldn't ask somebody for tea if they were unconscious. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, um, and I think that that's that's very on the nose, right? Um, so I think it really is a, a good video. So, I mean, if you're listening to this um, and you've never seen it, uh, it's in the show notes. Or it's just easily yeah, Googled. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, so consent's going to be really important. The other thing that's really important if we're going to uh, be asking for what we want is we have to know what we want. Um, so having an idea of our likes and our dislikes are very, very important. And, like, when Gabe and I were doing uh, the Good Touch Games activity, you know, a lot of people don't really know what they like, um, you know, mm -hmm. which... You know, as a sex therapist, I spend a lot of time asking people, like, well, what do you want right now? Um, I don't know. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, okay, well, that's totally fine. Let's figure that out. Um, so, I mean, I know that uh, social, well, not social media, like, apps kind of um, start that negotiation process for us. Like, you know, with the, the, the bio uh, field, mm -hmm. um, you know, so you can put in there what what you are looking for, um, and I think I and I think I've said this to you guys before that like it is, um, I think it is a a positive thing to do to put the things that you are looking for, not the things mm -hmm. that you're not looking for, because I I want to know what you what you want. I don't really I don't need to know right now what you don't want. Yeah, agree. You know, um, like, so tell me, like, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. <laughs> uh, yeah, tell me what you want, what you really, really want. Um, you know, up front, um, we can talk about what you're not really into, you know, afterwards as okay. like as a, a, a deeper part of the negotiation process. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that goes, that applies for other areas of our life too um, with, our family members, with our, with our friends, with our coworkers, right? Like, tell me what you want, um, what you want from me, uh, yeah. and I will make sure that I do that. If you tell me what I don't want, uh, what you don't want, that's like, I don't know. I, I, I personally feel like it is not the, not the, the best message to, 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 to send out, right? I, I usually think it's not, it's not necessarily positive. It's very, um, like, contrary. Like, like what I don't want is this, 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 and this. And it's like, you kind of like are crossing things off the list that if it's a definite, like a hard no, yeah, I get that. But like, it's now like limiting. It's putting you very closely in, a, in like a space that maybe you don't necessarily want to be in. Where on the flip side, if you talk about the things you do want, which are a little bit usually more positive, you're getting 
your needs met. And if those needs happen to coincide with the person you're playing with, then you have to have a good match. Whereas the negatives can kind of take away from the experience. And have you ever, I, I feel like I read an article on this or I saw some kind of something about this where like there are some couples out there who are more, um, they match with the stuff that they don't like more than the stuff that they do like. Interesting. Right, mm. like, I'm um, like, oh, I don't, you know, well, we both don't like this, and we both don't like this, and I'm like, okay, well, what do do you like, <laughs> right? Yeah. What What are your common interests? Um, Why are y'all together? Exactly. <laughs> like, if he likes, you know, french fries and you like mashed potatoes, that's one thing, but, like, if neither of you like potatoes at all, like, what are you eating with your burgers? Like, <laughs> are you going to have, like, anyway, sorry, that's a, that was a bad joke. I'm good. I'm good. Um, and then the other thing uh, that is important for this is that, like, asking will lead to intimacy. Um, because, like, what, what Gary was talking about, that, like, asking requires some form of vulnerability, which um, in... Uh, Brene Brown, I don't know if you know Brene Brown, but I'm obsessed with some Brene Brown. And Brene Brown says that, like, in order for there to be vulnerability, there has to be bravery behind it. Um, and uh, I really love that. Uh, so, you know, and in order for there to be intimacy, if, if, if in order for there to be intimacy, there needs to be vulnerability, that means that there has to be some kind of bravery, too. Mm. So asking for what you want is a brave thing. Well, it, it requires putting yourself first instead of second oh, yeah. or later. But Gary, sure. that's, that's selfish. <laughs> Correct. We were there's told nothing, not to selfish. There's nothing wrong with being selfish. There's there's nothing wrong with putting yourself first. And sometimes you need to be selfish. But mm -hmm. when your selfishness has a negative impact on other people, that's when you need to reassess. Yeah. And there is an entire field of sex therapy called, oh, fuck, I'm going to forget it right now. <laughs> right now. I'm going to forget exactly what it's called, but it's- um, Oh, I was like, is that what it's called? Because that's not <laughs> what it's called. That's oh, odd. man. Um, but it it's was... all about, like, um, uh, reconnecting with your physical experience of sex. And a lot about it is focusing on your experience rather than focusing on your partner's experience because we're going to be able to tap into our feelings way more than we're going to be able to tap into somebody else's experience. Um, and yeah. the where like we are told that we have to be more attuned to the other person's needs, but like if we're not attuned to ours, it, that's the breeding ground for like um, erectile dysfunction, for premature ejaculation, for um, for low desire, um, for a whole yeah. slew of sexual dysfunctions if we're not attuned to what's going on within our own body. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so being selfish isn't always not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think you should always, I mean, in certain situations that you should be selfish. Like this in particular, you know, what do you want? You know, that's kind of the main issue here. Like you're asking for and hoping to receive what you want. Yeah. And if you don't know that, if you can't like center yourself in these situations, then you're not really going to get what you want and you might end up being hurt in the process. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think there's also like levels of, of selfishness when it comes to this sort of things. You can be selfish in trying to get what you want, but also having that acceptance that may, based off of if the partner is willing to assist you with reaching what or getting what you want, you could also be accepting of, okay, I'm not going to get that now because my partner is not willing to do that. 
well, kind of that kind of negotiation sort of sort of thing uh, instead of selfish and being like, oh, I just don't want to have sex with you if you're not going to give me that. <laughs> yes. Well, that last statement, though, Jeff, that you gave was like it's that's revenge retaliation. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about there's a spectrum here. Right. No, no, like no, it's no, not a, not... a yay or nay thing of being selfish or not being selfish. It's it's a there there's kind of like a modicum of of selfishness and then the extreme selfishness. And I was just kind of showing the extremes. Right. Yeah. But I mean, like, but I wanted to point out that, like, you know, like some people might feel that it's OK to make such a statement. And I was like, no, like, no, 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 no. Like, that's really because that's that's using penalty penalty like punishment against an individual's free choice mm -hmm. like in right. the t thing you know it says like you know if a person says no honor the fact that they changed their mind even though they may have said they wanted tea and then later they said they didn't something changed from when the when you were first asked until they declined like so mm -hmm. you wouldn't turn around and you know be like well then you're never gonna have tea ever again it's like really <laughs> So when basically what I'm saying is when you when we talk about being selfish, we're not talking about being that like it's only about you. You you just need to communicate the things that you want that that basically would be kind of some that is your your needs specifically, not the other person's needs, but your needs, and then communicate that. But be, still be accepting if, for some reason, that cannot necessarily be accomplished. So trying to, to show that selfish doesn't necessarily mean being mean and, and it's all about you. But when you're right. trying to do that communication, you need to be able to have that little selfishness. Little bit. Teeny bit. And I feel like... Uh... You know, and we've talked about this. So when we did the the podcast on nonviolent communication, we talked about making like making you statements uh, or making I statements rather than you statements. And I think so something similar applies here too. Like I want to know what like I want to communicate to you what I like. Um, I don't want to. And let me see how how y'all feel. But like I don't want to put the the energy out there that like this is what I want to do to you. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, I'm more receptive if somebody tells me what, what they want during a, uh, a situation rather than, like, somebody telling me, oh, I want to blow you or, you know, I want to fuck you or something. Like, that's kind of, that rubs me yeah. the wrong way. I kind of feel that way, too. You know? Yeah, like, like for me, I honestly really dislike when I get hit up and they're like, I want you to fuck me. I want you to, you know, whatever and all that stuff, like kind of right off the bat or with any kind of, without no kind of like context, you know, they see the pictures or they see me online and they're like immediate, like, you know, I want you to do this. I can't wait to have your, you know, babies and all that shit. And I'm kind of like, uh, like, can you at least say hello first? Like, <laughs> like, can you, can you, can you, can you, can we well, talk about it? Like, in in a in a okay, I'll put it like this. Like, if I okay, gosh damn it. Like, if, context matters. Context does matter. Like, I'm thinking more along the lines of like going into. I'll just use I'll use Bear Form One as a perfect example because it's happened to me on more than one occasion. You know, most of the time when I use Bear for One, granted, eh, whatever. Growler. Growler's better. Growler's better. Let's not use Bear for One because fuck Bear for One. Um, <laughs> growler. Um, so, you know, I'm on Growler and someone 200, 300 miles away messages me and says, like, I can't wait for you, like, I want to feel your dick up my ass, and then unlock their pictures, and their 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 pictures are nothing but, like, their butt. Like, up in the air, seeing their hole, and all that shit. <laughs> I, when, 
Oh, oh, that was a bad, bad analogy. analogy. <laughs> um, phrasing. Uh, <laughs> I just that almost always turns me off because you're literally throwing yourself at me. And, and sometimes that's nice. Yeah. And sometimes it's fine, but most of the time it's like, I were, I'm like, what is up with you? Like what's going on with you that you are 200 plus miles away and you're throwing yourself at someone, throwing everything at them. Like pause, <laughs> like time out. Like maybe take a second and, and calm all of that emotion, that sexual drive down just a peg so that we can actually talk about what we want. But instead, you've literally told me I have no say in what I get to do to you. You have told me exactly what you want from me, but I don't get to say, well, what if I don't want to fuck you? And also, what that's a don't? consent violation. Yeah, I mean... Consent, <laughs> consent to your vocals. <laughs> I mean, that big fucking thing. Like, that's it. I just, I've never been a big fan of that. Like, the worst, like, one-two combo is uh, unlocking your private pictures and then asking, can I see yours? Like... I didn't. I don't know if I wanted to see yours to begin with, and now you're asking to see mine, even though I've clearly not even said maybe two words to you, or words we've been talking, and you just unlock. Mm -hmm. So on the spectrum of like context for asking and receiving, right? Like that is like on the like like total one end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> the shade of it all. Gary. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm thinking about your example about like the unlocking thing and I think what bothers me, and this is where the struggle is because it's a two-way street, I don't disagree with what you're saying, but what bothers me is when people ask me to unlock and then they don't unlock. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was like listening to your example and I'm like, well, I would have preferred them to unlock first because then like, I get to make the choice on whether or not I want to unlock. Where... Mm -hmm. If, if I operate from a quid pro quo, like kind of like tit for tat e equity, you know, thing mm -hmm. where I say where, you know, they ask me to reveal my private pictures, but they haven't revealed theirs, then, and this is honestly, I think that happens all the time to me on W Bear, that people are like, they want to see, you know, my private lock pictures, and I turn around and I request theirs. And more often than not, they will un reveal theirs, and then I un re I reveal mine. But it's like this weird dance because I'm kind of like, if you had outright like sent a message first, but mm -hmm. the way the app operates, I don't think they can reveal them automatically to me without me requesting it. Yeah, so that's I interesting. Can't. I might have to reach out. I might have to reach out to Xavier and be like, hey, what about this thing? Um, but I get it. Like, you know, that like the way the system operates is like, you know, you can't open the door unless it's knocked on first. And it's like, mm, yeah. what if I wanted the door already open? Yeah. So, I, I mean, I, so I was kind of thinking about what you said, and I don't disagree. You know, when people when people solicit unexpectedly without notice... It is a violation. It does not have consent. Mm -hmm. You did not like engage with me in a way that made me feel comforted, welcomed, in, you know, whatever. Like, you know. And I think everything is also about mood in the moment. Like, there are times when you want to be treated like a piece of meat. Like, yep. you want to be 
the tastiest morsel around and you want everyone to, you know, be begging to get some. Mm -hmm. But there are other times when that's like not appropriate and very disrespectful and you're kind of like, uh, hello, I am a whole human being. Yeah. I have thoughts, feelings, emotions, wants, desires, mm -hmm. not just X. Yeah. Yeah. And also, right. when people make assumptions about your, like, uh, uh, sexual positionality, mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, whatever, whatever way it is, which, I mean, stay in tune for my dissertation, because that's a part of it. Um, but, like, you know, when people write off about, like, you know, I want to fuck you, I'm like, dude, <laughs> like, no. <laughs> You know, I don't, um, you don't, you don't, what if I want to fuck you, right? What if I want to fuck you? <laughs> what if I, I don't want to fuck at all? It's funny how, like, to me, that's a very turn, like, turn it on its head. It's like, well, what if I want to fuck you? Did you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm all for it. Like, I want to, like, <laughs> clack that fan and be like, well, what if I want to fuck you? Where are we going? Where are we at? I mean, you could just like, be say, you wanna fuck saying, me? "I want to fuck you." Are we pop, rock, paper, scissors in this? What? What are we doing? Like, maybe, maybe you're both verse. It's a flip situation. I mean, yeah, seventy-five uh, percent. Um, but again, like you know, it's about asking. Like you know, it's about asking versus like making a, a demand or a a statement, right? Like. I'm more I'm more open to you asking me about that, mm -hmm. right? Like, hey, yeah, I was yeah. just kind of wondering. Are you interested? Like, fuck me in the ass, daddy. Period. It's Exclamation. Period. Exclamation point is a lot different than fuck me in the ass, daddy. Question mark. Question mark. <laughs> Thank you. Totally so, different phrases. So I mean, there's a, there's always doing. <laughs> this makes me think that, like, that I would love to fuck you if you're interested. If you're not, I understand. David, <laughs> what? How are, how are things at your home right now? Because <laughs> apparently, your exclamation got your partner's attention. Yes, it did. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Jim God. is in the kitchen. So he is within earshot. So, oh, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I'm listening to one quarter of the conversation. <laughs> wow. So we anyway. So, so we're talking about uh, like consent and um, and uh, tea. Uh, now let's let's do another food. Um, one of my favorite. Oh, we actually had this for dinner tonight. Pizza. Um, so have I ever talked to? you about um the sexual communication model of like that we need a new metaphor for sex um like you know we see sex being talked about in terms of like sports and like baseball um and that there is uh there's this guy's name is um al vernacchio um and he is proposing a pizza metaphor when discussing sex have I ever talked to you about that? Mm -mm, I don't think so. No, I, okay. I just read the title and I'm like, oh, that makes so much sense. Right. So, like, um, I uh, he has a TED Talk. Um, it's a really, really good TED Talk. But basically he's saying that, like, we need a new metaphor because the other me metaphor is, very, um, is, is really limited and it's also really goal-oriented that, like, you know, it's going to end in, in, in the proverbial you know, home run or orgasm when like sometimes that's not really even on the, on the table. So like, mm -hmm. so, the, so it's, so we can't, so we shouldn't say we, that we scored. We should say we got full. Yeah. I'm, I, I have my fill, right. I don't need another piece. So like, um, the cool thing I, I like about this metaphor is it's like, you know, you're sitting there and it's kind of like the tea, kind of like the tea metaphor, but um, this is like, okay, so we're going to have some sex. 
Um, do you agree that, you know, do you want sex tonight? Yeah. Okay. I want sex tonight. Okay. Nice to what, know. Do want, what do you want in your sex? Right. Like, what do you want in your pizza? <laughs> right. Like, um, do you want a blowjob? Do you want PIV? Do you want me do you want sausage? Do you want pepperoni? Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, do you want it? What uh, type of sauce would you like? What kind of, <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Uh, and, <laughs> um, and the other, you know, one of the other things with this model is that, you know, you, um, who's ever had a bad piece of pizza? Do you, do you want the stuffed crust? Oh my God. Oh jeez. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> or, or, okay. Or, or, okay. No. Do nope. you want the no. Nope. No. Do you, do you want the five cheese? Ew. Nope. See, you took it too far. <laughs> See, this is why I'm like, I think that this is questionable as a metaphor analogy. Because all I keep thinking is about is CeCe's Pizza. It's a buffet. Like, the whole point is just to get as much as you can, like, until you roll out the door. Which I guess is it, an equivalency to an orgy, I mean, but maybe not. Like, I mean, if you want, if that's what you want, then go to CeCe's and get look, your fill. Look, there's different type, uh, different forms of it pizza. It may not be good. There's it homemade. There's delivery. <laughs> it, you can carry out. Be, you can have the buffet. It may, it may, it may taste get you sick. To be like, no. <laughs> it might make you sick. Mm. And, <laughs> but it might be it might be spicy or it might be sweet. Yeah. I Okay. Anyways, keep going. Sorry, I'm, we're derailing. No, I like the I I like the idea of the pizza model. I I went and watched the TED Talk to kind of get the more a, a much a more full like what he's actually going for with it, but I so we're making a side, not just a slice. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And uh, the other thing that I like about the pizza model is uh, that, you know, I can get um, I can get a side of like I can get one half pepperoni and then, you know, Jim can get uh, his side with black olives. Right. Yeah. We don't we don't both have to get the same thing. Like, because I know there have been times where I'm like, you know, I don't really want head right now. Right. <laughs> I, I just want this. Um where he does so uh mm -hmm. you know it doesn't mean like we have to do the same stuff um and and again it's all about like consent like do you agree to this sure um and the other like the other difference from the 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 baseball or like the sports model is that like um sports is usually done at a specific time in a specific place with this but you can get pizza anywhere at any mm -hmm. time Right, you can have pizza for breakfast. You can have pizza for lunch. You can have pizza for dinner. Right? Um, you could have it at midnight. You could have it at two a.m. You could have it at ten o'clock. Pizza is the most versatile food. It is. So that's why I'm saying that I I, I like the the pizza metaphor as a way to talk about sex. Um, and you know, it's it's one that I use with my with my couples and even some of my folks when they are when they want to broach um, a subject that is really vulnerable, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I just say, think about it like you're talking about pizza, right? Mm -hmm. Like, um, this is just something you thin crust. Yeah. <laughs> Double decker. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Chicago style. Yeah. New <laughs> York. Owen, leftover. <laughs> uh -oh. I don't know how I feel about that. From I the mean, fridge. Girl. <laughs> I mean, there is frozen pizza. I do not like cold pizza. Would frozen pizza really equate more to porn? Um, um, Pre-made. You just need to heat up. DiGiorno. DiGiorno's is good, though. I like a good DiGiorno. See, this is, this is where this analogy starts to fall apart because we're personalizing it. We're branding it. Like, we're we're taking it, I think, beyond <laughs> what is meant by Al and his original concept. Yeah. Watch the video so of it. We, watch I the mean, video. Doesn't, you'll doesn't get the everybody idea. do that with, sport, with the sports metaphors, too? 
What do you mean? Like, they probably like throwing different different sports. I don't know. I I can't. I'm not much of a sporty person to really come up with the analogies. But there's so many different sports out there, and there's so many different pizzas out there. You you can make different analogies. Yeah, it's like getting sex could be a hole in one, a like a touchdown, a home run, a three well, point shot. Of, but what kind of an athlete are you? Or are you Michael Jordan? Or are you a Larry Bird? Are you uh-huh. you know? Yeah, yeah. We could, yeah. We you can you can break a lot of things down. But I think I I agree with you, Ed. I think I like the idea of the concept, and I want to hear more about it to kind of like get that idea across. Yeah. I think I th- um I think you'll really like it. I mean I'm 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 a big fan. Um, so so we've talked about the asking. Now let's talk about like uh, about receiving. Um, and Damon, you talked about uh, the importance of checking in. Um, mm-hmm. And <laughs> I said that uh, you know this checking in can be verbal or not verbal uh, because sometimes what's going on has rendered you speechless. Uh, and you you are not in a place where you can even utter any words, so that mm-hmm. has to be nonverbal. And yeah. so like so like I have an example of uh, um, I put a link to this one video that I really like, where the bottom can only give a nod of a, a nod of approval <laughs> that mm. what, what is happening is good. Um, and oh my yeah. goodness. Okay, now I'm curious because I have to see this now. Wait. It, it, do keep in mind this goes directly to the actual company's website, so you only see a preview. I'm you. So, uh, so yeah, so there's that. And then, um, uh, do, you, do you, you guys know about the compliment sandwich? Uh, for those who don't yes yeah okay so uh one of the things that that uh gabe and i talked about when on the receiving end of something to give a compliment sandwich to the person who is giving you the thing that you asked from them right like hey i really i'm really liking this um you know and then make any adjustments if you need any like you know, hey, can you do that more? So, like, Damon, you were talking about, like, if vlogging somebody, like, hey, I'm really liking this. Can you do more of that? Um, and then ending it with a um, thank you so much. This is so hot, right? Like, mm-hmm. oh, so yeah. fucking good. Mm-hmm. Um, and, again, like, what, what Gary was talking about, I think context is really important. Um, you know, if we're in a bathhouse or um a bookstore maybe these <laughs> aren't maybe these transactional uh exchanges aren't going to be as pro- prominent um so yeah so when you show the pr- the appreciation again right and just repeat that until orgasm or if that's even something that you want on your pizza yeah yeah right okay. The orgasm on your pizza? Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> I think I saw a video about that. No, he was eating pizza while he... Anyway. Um, <laughs> no, it was salad and she was eating it. She was very annoyed. No, no, no. No, 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 no. That's Different video. What, Different is, video. what is the comment? Um, gosh darn it. The, I lost the thought. No, but don't. I will... Oh. Yeah, the whole idea to me, I that's totally what it is. Like, I enjoy the compliments, and I enjoy providing, giving the compliments, you know, if needed be. Like, I don't think I want anyone here, if I've played with, to ever feel like I am dissatisfied with their service, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Like, like even if things don't, come to fruition <laughs> pun intended um then but i've really, i've usually have enjoyed something about it you know 
and would probably most of the time would probably want to do it again. There's been a few occasions where like we maybe need to reevaluate what we're doing before we do it again. But for the most part, like that sounds like business. Like <laughs> it does. That's why I'm laughing. I'm like, okay, it's a contract negotiation. Got it. Like, you know. <laughs> but like, yeah. But like, most of the time, you, I'm enjoying what is being done, or I'm enjoying something about what has been done. I appreciate the effort, even. You know, good job. Good for you. Way to go, Bucko. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> And I think that, uh, and I've used this example before, but Daddy Will Angel is, I think, the best at doing what I'm talking about. He is so appreciative of all of his partners, and he provides such a safe and warming environment for them. Oh, I'm going to have to send him another message. <laughs> We're talking about him again. again. Man, we just brought you up. Here you go. Exactly, get that exposure. Yeah, yeah. He is. I have seen his scenes, um, and that is, I agree with you. That's one thing that I get from him. I and I, I don't believe it's like playing to the camera. You know what I mean? I think it's a mm-hmm. genuine like you in my care you're in my care and even though we're fucking each other's brains out like i am still like here for you and comforting you and appreciating everything that you're doing you know um literally in some cases opening yourself up for me like like he 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 never does not check in compliment check in appreciate um you know He's, yeah, there have been like, there are seen, there have been negotiated scenes where that's not necessary. I've seen some of his videos, like, there are some earlier ones where he, he and the guy are kind of definitely going in, in a specific direction that is not, is meant to be very like, I am the sir and the dom and, oh. and master kind of thing. And the person doesn't necessarily want the, like, the, the, they want to be treated in a certain way. Yeah. So. And the other thing that I I really like that he does is he always tells the other person what he's going to do before he does it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Give us an opportunity to say no. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to, you want this, um, and, you know, uh, I'm going (laughs) to, I'm about to. Get ready. Yeah. Do you want this? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> totally love it. Any opportunity. I'm okay. looking at Gary's face, and I feel like Gary wants to say something, but he's not saying it. <laughs> what I what I hear being described sounds very attractive. But I've not experienced it. Like I've not witnessed it in the way in the context that you're stating mm-hmm. it. And I've also not experienced it like in person. Mm-hmm. Um so it's a little challenging, like to to, yeah. to hear that that's a thing. Like probably one of my favorite things about Gabe um is that his his viewpoint, his um entrance into things is very warm and wow that totally did not sound the way i wanted it to the way <laughs> the way he approaches <laughs> the way he approaches um i have had the experience in which he um i don't know how else to explain this all right, so uh, go with me for a moment because I want to make a little bit of analogy and I'm going to ask a question. How many of you have seen the movie Labyrinth with uh, David Bowie? I have not. A long time ago. Okay. It's been a while, but... So I'm going to ask you to think about towards the end of the movie, Sarah, uh, as mm-hmm. the character, 
has a moment. She she has her Dorothy moment. She has her revelation um, that she actually is more powerful than she realized. And mm-hmm. she makes a statement. And then the the scenery in which they're in just falls away. Like everything starts to like discombobulate and like go in different directions and blah, blah, blah. So that that I'm describing is something I felt twice in my lifetime. One of them with the very first person I ever uh, dated. Um, And that's why we dated. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. once with Gabe, because he commanded a presence very interestingly in a moment in which everything else fell away. Mm -hmm. And you were the center of existence but not in like a, an uncomfortable, like creepy, like you know, manipulative way. It was very like tender and caring, um, and it was him asking, "May I kiss you?" But there's so much in the com- complexity-wise in, in a simple question or in a simple statement, and he's the only person I know of that has a similar like. I kind of as I want to say like essence about him, like in what you're describing mm-hmm. from this, you know, uh, adult entertainment um, individual, you know, that they 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 put a certain kind of landscape to their to their situations with their partners. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's kind of what it is. It, it this I don't want to. Uh, it's very sensual. Yeah, it's it's a sensual, empathetic. Um, intimate, intimate, yeah, like vulnerable moment or moments, yeah. And it's, I think, what it is is it's one of the like ultimate, like, both people are essentially open themselves up to each other, if that you know kind of makes sense, you know, like you mentioned the, the game, like like may I kiss you kind of thing and that just kind of like taking it it will take you by like surprise as it were because we 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 know we're all used to we're men hate using that analogy but that's the thing like we we're used to like taking what we want like in in a lot of ways there's a lot of people in here that will just do whatever they want and they will take what they want and they don't give a fuck they give no fucks about whatever like here and like grab and take and get you know i want this and i'm getting it like we've we've been there and when you encounter someone or some ones that are not that it it throws you for a loop and it in turn in some ways breaks down that barrier that wall that you may have um, as um, I hope or I believe I try to be in some ways that kind of way when I'm with someone. Um, I'm not the. I don't know if I would ever be the one to do like the the like immediate kind of thing. I think with conversation and talking about it and negotiations, those walls will start crumbling, crumbling, crumbling down as we kind of discuss what we want to do. But there are some people I think that can get it from the get go. Like they're like you said, their essence almost is enough to make you feel protected, safe, secure. And even if this lasts a moment, you feel warm and safe in their in their presence. Yeah. So as we get to wrapping up our show here, Ed, was there anything else you wanted to go over or discuss? Um, Really, the only other thing, uh, like, kind of topical is uh, NPR had a article on how to use safe sex um, communication in uh, times of COVID with expanding our um, social bubbles. 
um, mm. I thought that was applicable because, um, you know, as I was saying before the show, this past weekend I went to the Woods campgrounds um, and, you know, had to have uh, uncomfortable conversations with people and about, like, what my boundaries were um, with social distancing. Um, and <laughs> as usual, right, like, some people were open to it and other people weren't. Um, and, you know, it, uh, but, you know, we can use the same language that we use when we're asking somebody, you know, um, have you been tested? Um, you know, uh, uh, you know, who have you been hanging around? Um, are you immunocompromised? Um, mm -hmm. you know, like all of these things, um, that we can, we can talk to like and ask like, Hey, can I give you a hug? Um, and like, even this morning, somebody said, Hey, can I give you a handshake? And I was like, I'll give you my elbow, um, as like a, you know, uh, contact or whatever, and then receiving mm -hmm. like, Hey, you know, <laughs> I'm putting my hand up, um, not open to a, a hug right now. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, yeah, I mean, this is like we keep talking about this this is an unprecedented time unprecedented time and i think any and all precautions you can take to keep yourself safe are important you know mm -hmm. and we've talked about this before about like having safer sex practices because of you know what's going on and it is not impossible to have sex you just have to think of sex differently yes see last that other podcast <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, like the other uh like one of the other things that i've i keep telling people is that like you know i have i you know physical touch is definitely my love language and uh it reminds me a lot about when i got clean or when i got you know when i stopped drinking and that like i had to accept the fact that like people are going to be drinking around me and like mm -hmm. if uh if I needed to not drink in order to like stay present in like the this in my life with myself and other people um and I wanted to enjoy the life that I have today then like if that's the sacrifice that I need to make then it's well worth it so if I need to keep you safe as well as me safe and that just means that I don't I I you know we can't have any physical contact then like that's that's okay it's okay it's okay yeah. Agreed. And and I mean we we are in a very challenging experience at the moment with I mean I was just discussing this last night actually with Drew. We were having a, a conversation about our just our personal lives and one of the things I brought up is I said, you know, the gay male community is completely upended. The the virus um has kind of created a reckoning for us as to how we handle ourselves and how we view interactions and what we do. And um, for me personally, I've kind of looked at it as there are so far that I can tell pretty much two main camps. There are people who take everything very seriously about the pandemic and are like, fuck no, like, I'm not hooking up, I'm not meeting up with other people, like, I care about not only my health, but the health of my greater community, be it my friends, my family, my neighbors, like, whatever. And then there are others that are not in that camp. And it's the others that are, you know, that frustrate the ones that are being cautious or taking, mm -hmm. you know, things to a certain point. And I just find it very intriguing observationally because those that I, I see taking it seriously and actually like lodging complaints against the other party or the other grouping are not those that survived the HIV epidemic. I mean, I think there are some, but I'm, I just find it very interesting that there's a whole portion of, I want, I guess I want to say us. Um, and I'm kind of like making some big judgments there or presumptions uh, of the, you know, about the four of us. But I think that, you know, there's a, there's a certain, perspective that is not necessarily there and then we see things like a couple weeks ago with the fire island parties and like how the community 
really like got torn asunder because it was like part of the community was like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? And, you know, it's like, seriously, you can't tell me that your life is that like vacuous that you had to go to a party that you had to be with these other people. And I mean, it was really hard because I was like, it's very judgmental. Like, like, it's judgmental to have an opinion about people doing these things, let alone like then going further, further into the detail of what that stuff is. Um, mm-hmm. It's very, it's just, and I'm just making like a kind of an observational point that, you know, we are trying to work through something that has not happened yet. Um, I had just said to Drew, you know, I said, I don't know what the future of events are going to be for our community until a vaccine comes around and it's, proven effective and reliable we may find ourselves for an unknown specified amount of time in a really strange holding pattern where we're where we're creating small bubbles of intimacy for the connections that we desire that we want that we need to replace what we used to have because i think Mm -hmm. we 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 got to a point where it was like anybody out there was a possibility and i mean i'm gonna get a bit graphic and extreme but it's kind of like any dick or any asshole completely possible Mm -hmm. and and prep you know was a huge piece of that you know we had found a way to get beyond the stigma of hiv being a death sentence medicines had proven that you could live a you know, average lifespan and, you know, uh, be productive and healthy. And then we get medicine that makes, gets us to this U equals U campaign where undetectable, um, you know, uh, is a big deal. And I think we had just been on the precipice of this whole, like, awakening as a community that we didn't feel that we had any barriers, that we had to like withhold ourselves, that we had to, you know, um, be accountable to our actions in some ways. And now this thing comes around and it's kind of like, oh, actually, hmm, yeah, no, we really probably should take some more time, <laughs> be a little bit more yeah. introspective and, and practice stuff. So, um, and we predominantly as a community my apologies, Ed, because I know that you're that you're you're a therapist with a practice, but I'm sorry, we're fucked up. Like, and I felt this way for <laughs> decades after coming out. Gay men are highly problematic, and I can't speak to lesbians and bisexuals and pansexuals and asexuals because those are not my experience. But gay men got problems, y'all. Like Encyclopedia Britannica subscriptions of problems, like. We don't know how to function. We don't know how to communicate. We don't know how to ask for what we want. We don't know how to receive. We don't know how to be good to ourselves. We abuse ourselves consistently. We get marketing and media that tells us, like, we have to look a certain way, behave a certain way, do a certain thing. We have to go to these, like, we have to go to, you know, Red River, you know, uh, Valley. We have to, you know, go to New Orleans. We have to go to Fire Island. We have to, you know what I mean? Like, all this messaging consistently comes across. It's like, and the bear community is highly problematic. You know, it was meant to be acceptable, but then all of a sudden it was like, yeah, but if you don't look like a Jack Radcliffe clone, you're not really part of the bear community. I mean, like, we've had all these phases of, of crap that we've gone through. And, you know, and, and it's kind of in a weird way infiltrated other portions. You know, we've already talked at length on this podcast about, like, the, you know, the pup community and what it's had to face and women in leather and kink. And we just did a flashback with Miss Tammy of being a woman in the bear community. Um, so I, I just, I, I feel, I think my heart hurts for our community and the broader sense, because I'm like, ugh, like we were not ready for this by any means. Even and now kind of it's getting ugly. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. It's getting, it's getting to the point where. <sighs> Like, like they're 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 the camps of like no more fucks are given, which is the worst thing to be in, because it's the thing that part it's the part that makes this even worse. In some ways, it's like you know throwing like no nope, we're starting to throw you know caution to the wind because whatever, 
Like, I keep saying that, like, whatever, like, I don't care. Like, it'll happen if it's going to happen. Like, it's the worst, like, feeling. And I'm getting, like, these senses of deja vu, even though I did not experience it when I was, you know, growing up. But, like, all of these things I'm seeing, like, flashbacks of, like, I don't care if I get it, you know, or I'm, if, if it happens, it happens. Like, it's, it was meant to be. Like, I remember hearing that so many times. And it's just like, it's, it's almost to the point of like, frust it's frustrating, but I'm like, at the same time, like, I'm almost kind of like, I get it. And that sounds well, bad, but like you said, like, like, we're all kind of like, like, there's like a fucked up, like, I, I like using that phrase, but like, there's that part of me that's like going, yeah, like, we're just like, whatever, like. Well, and, and part of, part of the issue about being gay men is that being a man is problematic. Like we we society wise have figured out coping mechanisms for stress, and the biggest one is sex. So whether it's masturbation or sex with other people, like sex addiction is a big thing, and we don't necessarily fully recognize it or own it. That like you know, you know that because I don't know how many guys really kind of break it down and think to themselves like, do I really have to masturbate on the daily or multiple times a day? Yes. But why do I do that? <laughs> Maybe because it gives I, me an endorphin well, rush and I feel better physically yeah. because, you know, there's hormones and chemicals and shit going on. So, you know, we if, we, if we're not even cognizant and, and able to, like, mentally, like, wrap our brains around that and handle that as, like, you know, uh, an identification being men, quote unquote, like, there's so much more beyond that. And that's one of the things that I think feeds into what you're talking about, David, where people have this, like, well, you know, fuck it all, like, kind of concept, like, you know, well, if it happens, it happens. And I think it's, I think that's a, a resignation attitude because you just, you're tired. Like, mm -hmm. you're exhausted. You're, you're at your wits end about not being able to do what you want to do to get what you want to get because there's all these mitigating factors. Um the reality is you could still meet people. You can still hang out with them. You can still actually be intimate with folks, but it takes a lot more effort. Like yeah. the convenience of dial a dick is still there, but it's not safe. Yeah. And, and uh, like, you know, I've uh, personally, I've talked to a few people um, and, you know, had said, Hey, listen, these are the options. This is what we can do. And they're like, no, in person is better. And I'm like, okay, well then not with me. Um, you know, I'm like, I'm literally and, and, giving and, you, I'm giving you options here. Like if you want, like, I get that you have a need that you need to have filled, like here are the ways that you can get that filled. And they're like, no, I'd rather do it in person. I'm like, okay. And you know, like we um, talked about sex risk taking, uh, sexual risk taking behavior. And you know, that's a play here, but now we have social risk taking behaviors mm -hmm. um, play here um and you know gary you were talking about like fire islands and even at, um at the woods right like you know my motivation for going there was just to get the fuck out of the house like yeah you know, i'm like i just want to get out of the house because if i don't go then i'm just gonna be here um and i'd rather be not here um and you know if that means that i'm i'm not gonna go to the pool i'm not gonna go to like you know, like the parties around, like that's fine. I'm just not home. <laughs> yeah, and, you um, just wanted, you just needed a little bit of an escape. Yeah, like a, a me, like a little bit of ways away. Like the circumstances for me going to Louisville were not the best, but it was so nice to like not be sitting in my house. Oh yeah, like that I've been sitting in for like the past like four or five months. Like it, like it, it just it felt nice. To like to not be here, even though it, you know, like I said, the circumstances weren't great, but like that was the like, it was nice to step away, um, and yeah, like I feel that, like I feel that on a level because you just you're gonna sit here for so long, and after so long, you're like stir crazy, whatever you want to call it, cabin fever what have you, it's it's a thing. Um, and then there's also the other dynamic of like, you know, like Gary brought up the fact that like he made some assumptions about the four of us. Um, I mean, that's a reality for me 
But like the other thing that is really on my nerves is the fact that like while I have to like I have to stand on my integrity and recognize that like I like these are the decisions that I'm making. Other people aren't making those, and therefore they're able to get the things that I really want. Um, and and I feel like Elle Woods when she is studying for the LSATs and like all of her friends are at the the Greek parties, like mm -hmm. pissed. You know, like, oh, okay, I see you all out there having a good time, right? Mm -hmm. and, like, what is the goal here? Like, my friggin' va my values are at risk here. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and I'll, and I gotta stand on my values. Yeah. And that's well, kind it, of a thing. Go ahead, Dan. Oh, no, that's, I mean, I'm just gonna kind of agree with them. Like, okay. that's sort of the thing. Like, you have to, everyone has to decide, you know. Yes, there's a a bit of selfishness to it, but and sometimes there's a selflessness to it as well. Like you are taking care of yourself, be maybe be more so because of the other people around you in your social circle or who you have to interact with. You know, like Ed, as an example, I don't know Rick, what you're doing in regards to like your practice and and everything, but I'm assuming. You know, if you were doing face to face in any way, shape, or form, like you don't want to be compromise your you know getting covid and then passing it on like to whatever <laughs> i think we all i hope but all would feel that way too mm -hmm. um so that's the risk you're having to take and you're having to make those choices to make sure that that doesn't happen wearing the mask wherever you can if you do have to go out limiting how long you're out, limiting who you're with, keeping social distance, all those things that are kind of out there um, to do. And does it suck? Absolutely, fucking -lutely. It sucks. But there's reasons behind it. There's, there's rationale behind it. There's evidence behind it that supports why it's necessary. True that. Yeah. I think that those who take it like seriously and like it's at the forefront of their mind like in the actions that they take have a very different outlook period on like the whole pandemic and and how things work and it's frustrating when you have that perspective because you feel like other people just don't get it or mm. that they're very careless and they have a disregard and yeah. i mean we've discussed it at work in, in terms of i've said I kind of feel that, you know, there are just people who won't get it, meaning like they won't understand the impact to the broader public health until it hits close to home. Mm -hmm. And even that is not a guarantee that like that they'll have a, a moment that it'll turn for them. And the problem with the turn where people like take their attitude and go in, in the other direction or in a preferred like come to the side that, you know, is, you know, the one that's like, please be rational and safe you know, take this seriously, is that it could be too late. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, the things that we talked about today are practical, solid, and can be highly effective in our lives, but applying them in this new landscape, I think, is, is, the, is the bigger challenge. Like, in knowing how to navigate the you know the current circumstances because mm -hmm. trust me like i'm fully aware <laughs> that there are people out there that are hooking up or wanting to hook up mm -hmm. like i'm no fool i know people are hooking up i don't i like i'm not a peeping tom i don't have like you know i'm not looking at people's windows but right. <laughs> There are individuals who are like hitting me up and they're like, hey, what's up? Blah, blah, blah. Like pictures of this and that. I'm just like, really? Like, I don't know you. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know you. And I think it's the biggest piece. It's like, if I know nothing about you and I have no reference point, I can't, I can't because yeah. I need, I need to be able to establish whether or not this is practical. And the only way I could do that is by relying on the people I trust. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a connection to them, then even then I don't know. And and that's not foolproof by any imagination, because I've actually befriended individuals 
who I thought were good people that a friend of mine or multiple friends of mine were connected to. And then in hindsight, I look back and I was like, Ooh, no, like not only were they not a good person, but nobody came to me and said, uh, you might want to keep your distance or you might not want to get involved or you might want to like step away. Cause that, that person may not have bad intent, but it's like, they've got some shit they're going through. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's really hard to keep all of that in account, you know what I mean? And so mm. when it comes to our community and events and activities and that, it, it is much more challenging because yeah, people are tired of virtual whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but welcome to 2020. And into 2021. Like I, I honestly don't think now that we're in July that we're going to see much of a a difference through the end of the year, as sad as that is to say. Yeah. Um, there is some promise on the horizon. Um, there are actually two, I think, or three different vaccines that are making some progress. They're moving through the stages. But even if they get into like broader human trial and stuff, it's going to be 2021 before we get to the potential of being uh, accepted and approved and then uh, like possibly manufactured and available. So... Mm -hmm. And that's difficult for people who, like, I think more than anything about the people that are highly social and interactive. Like, the social butterflies, I'm like, are, are y'all, like, dying? Not literally, but you know what I mean? Like, you know, how, how challenging that is. Because it's like, well, I'm a social person. I am okay with being home and being a homebody. So I'm not affected yet. But I've also... I'm I'm not really one to like to be the proper representation because I've been mm. working this entire time. I have not been laid off. I have not been stuck anywhere. I had to go to work the entire mm -hmm. time. I had to take care of my dad as well. Like so, no, nothing really has changed for me. So I'm not. I have not had the experience that others have had. Yeah, yeah. So I, I get it mm -hmm. to a point. And with that, guess what, folks? That's, all. That's the end. Anyways, Sad. you can contact us. Pop over to our website, CubsOutLoud.com. Shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, six or otherwise, at 361 talk. That's 361-265-8255. You can follow us on various social media outlets at Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube at CubsOutLoud in the appropriate places URL. Uh, you can join our entourage chat at tinygirl.com slash telegram dash col. You can subscribe to our Google Calendar to find out when we may be recording these shows. Uh, you can also get merchandise such as the Consent is My Foreplay shirt that Damon and Gary are wearing in two different types, Pup and Bear, as well as Drag, Trans, and le uh, Leather? I guess that's leather, it. Leather. <laughs> so many different varieties on that one. And all it says is dot com slash comes out loud or it says let's see a your Zazzle your Zazzle localization where appropriate. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Or if you want to just shoot us a one-time donation, you can go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can rate us on iTunes, subscribe to us at Google Play Podcasts, and Spotify. You can find me anywhere on the internet. It's box at box, pumpy box, cup box, something or other. Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as uh, bless you. <laughs> um, if you want to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cup 79 on most bear related sites and Facebook, or find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. And if you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabra73. That's G A R B E A R 73. Uh, if you can, send me a, like, a message or something with your request so I know who you is, because otherwise you just look like a bot. <laughs> Mr. Ed, as our guest, if people want to get in touch with you, how would they do so? Uh, well, you can find me on uh, Instagram as Eddie H. Cook. Um, you can find me, or no, no, uh, unit, wait. <laughs> Never mind. Um, you can find me <laughs> on Twitter as Eddie H. Cook. Um, you can find me on um, Facebook is just my name, and you can also go to my website at eactherapy.com There you go. And with that, take it out everybody. Bye. <laughs>
everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all.